Hey guys, Michael McWhorter here, and in an attempt to continue kind of uploading some stuff regularly for you guys, I want to put this up today. Um, really quickly, there was a contest that just recently happened. It was put on by Shudder, which is the online horror uh, streaming provider. Uh, they teamed up with Project Greenlight, with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck fame, and they were looking for horror filmmakers to make a three-minute pitch video to pitch them a feature film, $300,000, Clive Barker, etc., etc., etc. This is something that I made for that. Uh, ironically enough, I don't know that I actually was entered. Um, there were some issues with the uploading and stuff at the end of the day, or I should say on the final day, so uh, I never really got confirmation that I was in it. Regardless, I did not make the top ten, and there were a lot of entries, so that was a feat unto itself. I will say, uh, some friends of mine, uh, Johnny Bones and Teresa Danko, they did make the top ten with an amazing pitch um, that I really thought should have been uh, the winner. They just recently announced the top five, and unfortunately they were not in the top five, and I think that's a travesty. Uh, however, I am going to include a link to their pitch for Before She Dies here so you guys can see that. But really, I wanted to upload this so you guys could get an idea of a pitch. Um, now, to give it some context, normally a pitch would not happen like this. Normally, a pitch is a situation where a filmmaker is brought in front of a studio, uh, or I should say into a studio in front of, say, studio execs, sit down in a room, and they go, okay, we're interested in making a feature film with you. What have you got? Go. And then you would proceed to pitch them an idea, concept, script that you have. Um, usually that consists of you kind of almost acting out a treatment version of the movie. You know, that can take anywhere from, you know, eight minutes to 25 minutes, depending on what you're pitching. I mean, if no one had read Lord of the Rings and you were trying to pitch Lord of the Rings, I'm pretty sure that pitch would take a little while. Um, this, for this contest, the limit was three minutes. So three minutes is really tight. Um, definitely not the norm. And so you can't necessarily follow the traditional rules of pitching. You would, uh, you know, you try and get some of the story in there, but then you're also trying to sell yourself because Project Greenlight always has this show aspect to it. At any rate, this was my offering. So I am wanted to put this up here for you guys to see. Um, I hate stuff like this because it's me talking to a camera, which is something they required. Uh, we couldn't just do like animatics or a little scene or something. Um, but... This gives you maybe some idea of how that stuff works. And like I said, I'll also provide a link to um, uh, Johnny and Teresa's because I think theirs is exponentially better than mine. Uh, it looks beautiful. Uh, I love their their uh, concept art. It was really, really cool. Um, they definitely did not put it together as quickly as I did. <laughs> so kudos to them for that. And last but not least, guys, um, if you are just watching this, the trailer for the feature film that I recently was the editor and second unit on Warning Shot. There you go. Actually, uh, the teaser just came out online this week. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that as well if you want to see that. But it's um, pretty proud of it. Pretty cool. Um, some really, really cool people involved in it. So if you get a chance, feel free to watch that and leave comments um, for that as well. In the meantime, here is my pitch for a werewolf horror film that I have titled Sweet Tooth. Hello, my name is Michael McWhorter. I'm a filmmaker from Florida, and I'm here to pitch you my feature-length horror film, Sweet Tooth. Admittedly, the name is a little bit silly, but if you bear with me, it'll make sense in the end. The setting of the film is South Florida, a place known for tropical beaches and glamorous nightlife, but is also home to hundreds of miles of sugarcane fields, and that's where we find ourselves in the story. We open on a prison transport van carrying two of our leads, a homicide detective named Joseph Hernandez, a man wrestling with thoughts of revenge and his own morality, and a recently apprehended serial killer, a knife-wielding, silver-tongued Irishman the press ironically nicknamed Billy the Brit. They travel with two guards and two other inmates, driving back roads through the aforementioned cane fields, buying time while Detective Hernandez tries to work up the nerve to carry out his mission, to make sure Billy never makes it to prison. The trip is interrupted when something rushes out in front of the transport, causing them to crash. One of the guards goes to investigate and finds a man lying on the road. He's bleeding badly and begging to be killed. Just then, a creature bursts out from underneath the truck, and kills one of the guards, and sends the rest of the men rushing into the fields. Panicked and running for their lives, they find an old abandoned church and barricade themselves inside. The church already housed three Haitian migrant workers. One, a man named Philippe, sheds some light on what they're experiencing. See, Haiti has a culture that's steeped in the supernatural. 
Voodoo is widely practiced, and werewolves are a large part of their folklore. Theirs is a unique take on lycanthropes that has never been explored in cinema before. They call them Ja Rouge, or the Red Eyes. In fact, after the 2010 earthquakes forced thousands of Haitians to congregate in homeless camps, stories ran rampant of werewolves stealing people in the night, as Philippe recites firsthand. Also, when someone is bitten or scratched, they don't become a werewolf themselves, but rather can be controlled by the beast's mind. Though Philippe warns, if you are injured and then kill the beast, its curse will be passed on to you. As more die with limited options, it becomes apparent that the beast kills not out of necessity, but for pleasure. A concept Billy understands all too well, and he doesn't like the competition. All of this building to the ultimate one-on-one -on -one showdown, serial killer versus werewolf. And really, who doesn't want to see that? Oh, and it's a werewolf in a sugarcane field, that's why it's called Sweet Tooth. And besides, when did horror movie titles get so pretentious? Remember when they had simple names like The Evil Dead or Friday Night or The Thing? You know, scary, sometimes funny, action-packed movies where ordinary people faced extraordinary circumstances? Yeah, me too. Pick me and let's make that.